Here's a quick overview of how to set up the 958A for recording an audio signal in channel 4 while triggering off a vibration signal in channels 1, 2 or 3. Uh, first thing we need to do is to get the, the analyzer into wave recorder mode. So we go into the function menu and we choose uh, the wave recorder option, assuming it's installed um, and ready to go. So we press enter to accept that. The next thing we have to do is to find a suitable USB stick um, and uh, get that talking to the analyzer. So I've got one here. I will now plug this directly into the USB port um, and hopefully the analyzer will recognize it. It's counting how much space it's got on disk and then it will file system options. Now, um, it's best not to use uh, a very large USB stick. Um, but if you do, make sure it's a fast one. This particular one, I think, is uh, one gigabyte or something like that. So let's uh, press Enter to accept those settings. And the, uh, the USB stick is now ready. You'll also see that uh, at the top of the screen there is a little note, musical note icon, which shows that uh, the disk is primed up and ready to go. The next thing you do is obviously set up your normal measurement parameters. So for example, vibration in channels 1, 2 and 3 might be using WD or WB weighting. And then set up your uh, profiles in channel 4 to set it up for your noise measurement. I won't go into that now. Um, the next thing to do is to set up how we actually acquire data. So if we go to uh, the main menu and go down to the input and the measurement setup, uh, this is where we can set up the timing of presumably you're going to use a fairly long period of time. So let's say put one hour in there. And also you can put in uh, the number of cycles that you want to measure over. If you want a logger, you can store that and change the logger step going into the memory. Now, if you use a, an infinite number of cycles, you also need to sort out the file save menu options to set that to auto save. So at the end of every measurement period, in this case one hour, it uh, automatically saves the measurement data to the memory and then it restarts a new. So if we're happy with all those settings, press enter. Channel setup, as I said before, you can set this up for vibration or sound and change the range and change the filters. We'll skip over that for now. If you want to use the logger, simply just uh, make sure that it's switched on and then you can choose which parameters you want to go into the logger. But again, I won't worry too much about that. The next is the wave parameters. Uh, normally we'd use the PCM mode, uh, but if you want 24-bit uh, data, you can use the extensible. This reduces compatibility with some post-analysis programs, uh, but there are plenty of tools available, such as Audacity, that allow you to change the format. Safe mode uh, ensures that or the data is recorded in a slightly more orderly fashion. Um, but in this case, since we're only going to be recording channel 4, uh, we shouldn't have too many issues with the, the right frequency and so on. If you really want to sample at 48 kilohertz, that will fill up your USB stick the quickest. Um, if you're just interested in identifying what data uh, what has caused the noise problem, then uh, probably the sampling rate is fine at 12 kilohertz. That will provide a, a measurement bandwidth of 5 kilohertz. And also you've got the option of either using 24 bits per sample. You can change it to 16 bit and then you get some options to put in digital gain prior uh, to the storage. Um, this is very useful if you just want to reduce the file size by using 16 um, but also make sure that very low level noises are recorded um, uh, but obviously that will give you the risk of overload at the top end as well but let's leave that on 24 bit uh, and that's ready to go so you can see i've only enabled audio recording in channel 4 I'm not interested in recording anything in channels 1 2 and 3. so that's all set up now very importantly we need to set up the triggers um, now we are going to be triggering the audio off the vibration channels uh, and then recording in the uh, the noise channel. So obviously there are measurement triggers and logger triggers if you want them, but we're more interested in the wave trigger. 
Now, before I set a wave trigger, I need to define the trigger itself. And the way to do that is to come down to the trigger event setup. And we will be, say, triggering off, I don't know, maybe channel 3. That'll be the vertical channel. Um, and he can choose what we want to trigger off. Uh, we've got the possibility of using two triggers. These are normally used for amber and red levels, for example. Um, but here we're just going to set a simple trigger. And here we would normally choose level plus. There's the phone going, so ignore that. Um, and you can also choose uh, the integration time for the trigger. So, for example, if I want to look at if the level goes above uh, a certain threshold with an integration time of one second, that will work fine. Oh, they're trying to sell me BPI insurance. Uh, you can also choose the parameter that you want to trigger off. Um, so at the moment it's set to peak. If, say, you're doing peak particle velocity, that's fine. Um, if you want to do uh, acceleration, for example, you might just want to take the simple RMS value. Here you can put in uh, the level that you want to trigger off. So in this case, if the RMS level with a one second integration time goes above 10 meters per second squared, that will give you a positive trigger action. And then the trigger actions you can set here. And let's go down to wave. So I want to trigger a wave recording from that trigger level. So press enter to accept those parameters and now escape back to the event setup, escape back. And now we can go to the wave trigger. And here we can enable it. We can define how long we want to record for, but uh, normally you just take a snapshot just to sort of see what's happening. So let's change that to a fixed link length. And here, for example, we've got 10. Uh, we can have a pre-trigger. In other words, it will record a little bit of audio uh, before the trigger point. Um, now, the length of this will depend upon the sample rate you've chosen. Uh, with the 958A, uh, it'll be uh, 1 second at 48 kilohertz, 2 seconds at 24 kilohertz, and 4 seconds at 12 kilohertz. Now we need to select the source of that, that trigger. Um, and here you can see the uh, trigger uh, event that I defined in the other menu. And you can see at the moment it's set to uh, channel 3, profile 1. It's active, it's switched on, and it's uh, the mode is the level going above a certain threshold. And uh, it's going to trigger off the RMS result. So that's it. Um, obviously you can see that you can put in some other uh, triggers here as well to trigger the wave. Um, so you can make some quite complicated um, profiles. So that's it. Um, we're all ready to go. Um, we'll save those settings. And if we start a measurement, um, then you should see the normal display. You'll see uh, the little musical icon at the top left there. And if the level in channel 3, which is a vibration channel, goes above 10 meters per second squared, well, I haven't got anything plugged in, uh, it will then trigger the wave recording. And in the wave setup, we did define that as recording channel 4. So that just about does it. Hope that's been useful.